Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Comics Rant. I'm your host, Arvin Bautista, and uh, welcome to the show. Welcome to the eighth episode. And sorry, I have not been recording a lot. It's been kind of crazy. Um, let's see, last time was my sketch uh, on my uh, comic book. It was like a sketch break, and then I just kind of disappeared. So what has happened in between then has been Inktober. It has been, uh, oh, a, um, a, uh, hackathon of sorts at my company so i ended up actually drawing comics as a uh, presentation for the uh, internal use of the company it was a lot of fun but also pretty tiring and then there was thanksgiving and then there was my wife's birthday um so it's been kind of crazy as i'm sure it has been crazy for everybody but I am now out of excuses to procrastinate, and I'm back. So I will start going through some of the work that I did uh, for Inktober, or um, the hashtag I was using was Indietober. Um, and that was for a project I've been working um, throughout all the Inkto Inktober years that I participated, the last two at least. And it's for a different comic book. Um, the comic book with some of my childhood characters and I'll go through that later on in the second half of the um, episode but it's different from my um, bomb squad work um, but for now let's go over um, one of my heroes as well um, the comic uh, nerd out portion portion of the episode and it will be about um, Jaime Hernandez, um, one of the one of the Hernandez brothers that did. I think there's like three of them that did uh, the Love and Rockets. Um, uh, I guess like indie books from back in the '80s. So the interesting thing is, I didn't come to know about his work until way later. Um, Oh, by the way, I also have like all brand new stuff. I got like a new mic and a new webcam. So I it's like a much bigger uh, view. So I kind of had to put all this stuff back here <laughs> to hide all the craziness that's going on in my garage. So I apologize that I have my artwork next to Neil Adams, Travis Charest, and Dave Stevens. So sorry, I'm next to these masters, but it was these things were the only large enough pieces of artwork that I could find and just scramble to cover up the back. Anyway, so but at least with this camera, I think it can be pretty sharp. So I can just raise up some of the stuff that I want to talk about and it'll be easier for everybody to see. So this was the first compilation I got of Love and Rockets um, with uh, Jaime Hernandez's stuff, like primarily his stuff. Um, little background is I found out about him through my uh, art teacher, um, David uh, Mezzichelli. Um, you probably might know him from the uh, the Batman Year One uh, books, and uh, I got I took his comic book class. Um, in college in the Rhode Island School of Design and he had a bunch of examples on like wor uh, comics to look at and um, good books and um, one of them was Jaime Hernandez and um, I guess Love and Rockets is uh, it's it's been going on for a few years and I think it's still going on and uh, it's kind of like this uh, what's the word I want to look for here? Like punk rock, um, sci-fi, um, um, like barrio kind of a, a book. It's just a mix of all these different things that he likes and his influences, and it's it's really awesome. Uh, I feel like I'm not cool enough to read these books because it's just so good. And these characters are so cool and so down to earth. Like, you know, I could never hang out with these people. They would think with these people, they're so real to me that they're like, you know, Maggie and Hopi and 
Penny Sentry and Ray and Doyle, all these characters from this book uh, live like lives that are just so much cooler than mine. <laughs> and also, sadly, a, very, a lot more tragic than mine, so maybe I should be thankful. Anyway, um, I love Jaime Hernandez's work. Um, it's just got this amazing uh, clean line, uh, brushstroke, uh, the way he blocks out uh, dark uh, areas to light, the contrast that he uses, his compositions, they're all great. And um, throughout the years, like, so there's like a lot of volumes of uh, Love and Rockets, and he, the, the first run, I think, goes up to like 13. This is the last of the Jaime Hernandez's story with Maggie and Hopi. 13 volumes, you know, these are pretty considerable. There's 155 pages in one of these. And uh, they took like a little break, I believe. Uh, they were just pumping out a little bit. And then they kind of went back and started doing another series of Love and Rockets. Um, anyway, let's get into some of this art. Let's make use of our new HD camera, quote unquote, and take a look at some of this stuff. Um, so he's got like this, uh, the book, the books that they do are all in black and white and they're, and they're great. So this is when I started getting into a lot of the uh, high contrast stuff from Gaijin Studios or Mike Mignola. Um, and, you know, these guys uh, just do it um, like nobody's business. Um, but in the beginning, when he was first drawing some of this stuff, oops, when he was first drawing some of this stuff, it was, um, he was, you could see that he was still kind of um, trying to find his style here. Um, but, you know, it's already really solid at this point. So there's a lot of um, high contrast. There's hatching. You know, there's, um, you know, great figure work. There's, like, these spaceships. Where'd it go? Spaceships and dinosaurs. And, you know, um, just great use of contrast. And in this um, first half, it's about Maggie going off to this... Uh, other place with and she's like this uh pro solar mechanic so this is in the very beginning and he would merge like these two worlds of sci-fi and your neighborhood uh hopper's neighborhood uh where she comes from and it's actually a great mix there's he's able to do it really well um oh, here's a page that i always remember it's um I think it's because of the way that he renders the mud it just looks great really great um you know and it's all this like luscious black and white and i had the biggest crush on maggie <laughs> when i was single uh she was so awesome uh just very lovable very real um you know and uh later on in the series there's a character that um, she has a relationship with, and I and I always think like, oh man, that could totally be me. And uh, <laughs> well, if you read this, if you read the series, you'll find out that you know that poor guy just gets abused and abused. I mean, <laughs> by Maggie, because just wasn't her type of guy. It was always Hopi for um, for this character. But um, anyway, some of this. So he'll do some sequences. Um, that are comedic, but then he'll have like some of these other sequences that are just like he mixes like serious and comedy and everything in between. Really, there's like horror uh, moments in here. There's like Mexican pro wrestling. Uh, Maggie's uh, aunt is like this uh, world champion, and then okay, so look at this cover that he did here it's like super detailed and he doesn't draw like this anymore uh, as um, as he draws more of these characters and more of these things in the series it simplifies a little bit more um, but it's like this very balanced um, simplicity you could say right like there's just enough detail um, to make it interesting but also boiled down so it's an easy read so uh, I always remember this panel. I don't know why. 
Uh, it looks great. But, uh oh, oops, I believe my screensaver just turned on. It's probably still recording, but just in case. So, you'll draw stuff like that, just like very simple stuff, but it looks so great. Like, look at that face. Look at that, um, those lines on her hair, great. And then on her lip, different uh, texture. And then on her chin. And then just like this nice, like, all black. Just solid black. That's fantastic. Anyway, let's move on. So that was the first book. And then, you know, the years of um, the series ongoing. And you get to live with these characters. And, you know, like I was saying, they, were, they just became real. They just became very real. They had very real problems. They're very human. Um, they have their own faults. Um, but they also have their own virtues, you know, like... And it's kind of like heartbreaking sometimes with some of the things that the characters go through. Um, and he pulls it off. Like, you know, like... It's just amazing how great of a writer, a storyteller, and a draftsman uh, Jaime Hernandez is. Um, but this one, I remember... So, when I was out of work, I went to the public library in San Francisco. And I just binged on any comic book I could get my hands on. And this was... So I binged all of Love and Rockets. Um, and this just hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, this um, volume, The Death of Speedy, uh, about a childhood friend uh, from Hoppers, where Maggie and Hopi are from. Ho oh, sorry, Hopi is Maggie's best friend. Um, uh, lover and um, just everything in between. Um, but... Um, Speedy belongs to a gang, and this is the death of Speedy. Anyway, um, one of the best uh, story arcs. They're all really good, to be honest, but one of the best. Um, easy to read, I guess, in this chapter. It's all kind of self-contained. Um, but here, it's already, let's see, this is volume 7, so he's just... He's halfway, and he's already kind of found his voice already and what these characters look like, how much detail he should put on. Oop, come on. And, um, you know, the kind of contrast that he put in there. And it's great. Um, it's just really great. So, let me... so what I found when I was doing a reread on this book in particular was that he would do this thing where, um, like I was saying, he could... He has influence from Dan DiCarlo, and that's like absolutely fantastic in my opinion. But he could pull off this thing where it's like comedy and... Oh, my camera's not handling. Okay. Comedy and um, a serious tone, right? And one of my favorites is when he'll do this thing with their feet. And this is like a total Archie thing, like a Dan DiCarlo um, look. But then it's like these these guys are like, you know, they're dudes... The boys in the hood, they're like guys in a gang, you know, with Ray. This is Ray, by the way, my hero, the Maggie's uh, punching bag. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I love it because it's like this great ju juxtaposition of iconography, I guess, at that point, right? Archie, Archie comics are so iconic now um, that it, it works in like almost like this... It pulls a little bit of irony and like it's kind of uh, interesting because you're like, oh yeah, it's the, it's the guys, right? Because Archie characters walk like that too. So you kind of feel comfortable with it a little bit. Um, one of the things I found, so here's a sequence that I have. So it's, uh, um, it's got, it plays off the comedy. So you say, he says, uh, Speedy, and he's like, you missed it last night, man. While you were being whooped with your girlfriend, we, and then boot to the butt. And then his friend flies off panel, right? Like, that's funny. It's a gag, right? Archie style. And it's great. It's pulled off great. You know, it's, it's awesome. Um, what's great is, like, as I was reading it, there's a, there's a panel here. It's not a very PG 
panel because there's some language here. But one of the guys actually mentions um, like how they don't like Speedy anymore because he would beat up his own buddies. You know, like that, that comedy take of this guy getting kicked off panel, you know, which is funny, actually has real story implications. Kind of cool, like kind of really cool, actually. Um, so then, you know, you take these things seriously, like, yeah, just because it's played off for laughs doesn't mean it didn't happen. It still happens, and the story will take that into account. Um, and then here's another, uh, here's a cover that he did that I love just the use of black um and you know this is <laughs> i totally never went to any concerts so i have no idea what this would be like but you know it looks so cool <laughs> uh and then you know he's got like a bunch of these wrestling things too so you know this this book is actually split up into two the last half is so it's a it's a shocking thing right this is the death of speedy i'm not spoiling anything for you guys um he dies, right? He dies. Um, the way it's told is excellent. The way it's, the way he will jump from scene to scene, um, and cut from scene to scene is fantastic. Um, anyway, so once that uh, story ends, the first uh, Death of Speedy um, chapter, it's like a sad end. Oh, sorry, my my lights just kind of go out every now and then, but. My wife installed this automatic light. See, hey, how about that? And um, it's uh, it after that story. Sorry, it it time jumps a little bit. So Maggie is you know distraught, all this stuff going on. So he she goes with her aunt on the tour because her aunt is going back into wrestling. Um, and it's it's interesting because you want to stick with the aftermath of all this right you want to stick there and see and mourn and be with uh, the people and hoppers but the choice to make it jump to when she's escaping is how she maggie i mean is how she deals with that situation and it's awesome because at first you're like oh i don't want to read about like this wrestling thing and then as you get into the wrestling thing, it's like actually pretty darn cool. Um, so there's a few more volumes after that. Wigwam Bam, Chester Square is the last part of it, um, where the story is kind of resolved, but it's more like resolved to the point where um, the main things are done, but it, it's still a series that can keep going, and it does. So while, I think while... The, they were not working on Love and Rockets. Jaime Hernandez did this one, Wo Nelly. And this is all just wrestling. And it's, all, it's totally awesome. It's just, um, I think, him having fun and drawing what he wants to draw. And, of course, the story and the characters are spot-on awesome. Um, you know, I, I got this at a used bookstore Um in San Francisco called Green Apple and if you guys are ever in the in the neighborhood um, drop by if it's open <laughs> again uh, fantastic bookstore um, I would always go there and get lost buying looking through books and all this kind of stuff trying out new things because they were on sale um, anyway this is these are some of the pages in Wonelli and there's a there's a ton of this wrestling stuff going on and it's just so great um you know and he draws women with realistic physique you know like i mean you know of course they're still very um uh, uh what, what's the word i'm looking for um um comic book guys because they're wrestlers right so they kind of have like muscular bodies uh a lot of curves, a lot of like um, great faces, um, and and the book is chock full of like action sequences like this. You know, everybody's just getting their eye gouged and hair pulled, 
Um, so let's see, I marked off some here for us to go through. And uh, the story is fantastic. And this is like totally a different set of characters here. I mean, it's still Vicky Glory, which is Maggie's aunt. And, uh, and how she's trying to set up the next generation of wrestlers and her own. And she's like a manager now. So it's kind of nice. It, it, it is kind of a con continuation of the stories and where these characters are. But it's also um, um, it's also kind of showing you like the politics of this wrestling world that he's kind of made, um, you know, where they're kind of real fighting, but not, you know, like people can actually lose if they fought harder. No, it's not totally staged, kind of. <laughs> um, but it's a great line that he will ride uh, within the story of like these uh, wrestlers because, you know, while it's like acting to like wrestling is acting, right? Like this kind of wrestling, but then they'll also be in like the real world, like in that first storyline, uh, Maggie actually meets uh, one of um, her aunt's arch nemesis's nemesis, <laughs> nemesis is, um, and uh, she actually is like super adventurous and gets out of tough scrapes using her wrestling moves and stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of great. Uh, let's see. So in this, in this, uh, the cover gallery, he has like a, what I would equate to the equivalent of having a Wolverine um, <laughs> uh, guest appearance, but with Maggie, right? Because everybody knows Maggie. So why not? You know, if she shows up in the book, maybe that'll sell more copies. <laughs> like the indie version of a Wolverine or Batman showing up back then. Um, and it's great. You know, you get to catch up with her uh, just for a couple of pages and see how they're related to each other. Um, but this book is definitely about these two characters that are on this cover. Or this one and this one. <laughs> And wrestling, just a lot of wrestling. It's awesome. Um, so that is my uh, experience with Jaime Hernandez's work. Um, one of my favorite artists that I did not get to see until way later, like in college. Um, I don't know if I would have been if I would have been ready to read it uh when it did come out it was like back in the 80s because i was still super superhero man then i still am but you know but i don't know if my if i'd be mature enough to be hooked onto it um but the characters are so real in all of his books that you just get sucked into the story and he's a fantastic draftsman so it makes it really easy to follow his work um, anyway, that's it for this portion. Uh, check out Jaime Hernandez's work. They still got a bunch, him and his brother, still a do a bunch of books uh, under Fantagraphics um, with the Love and Rockets title. It could have ended again. I haven't been keeping up. Um, but it's great work. Definitely something that I will go back to and look at uh, just for like high contrast and inspiration, really. I love rereading it. I'm catching a lot of extra things about the books that I never saw before. Um, but give it a look. It's definitely well worth it and one of my um, artistic influences. Anyway, that's it for today. This uh, portion of Comics Rent is over and we will go into the drawing half. See you in a bit. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the second portion of Comics Rant, and we're going to draw, well, we're going to have me talk over my time lapse of my drawings. Um, anyway, so uh, it's been a while, i changed clothes <laughs> since I recorded the first half, but um, it's just been kind of busy. I think it's been <laughs> kind of busy and crazy for everybody. So um, back to the second half.
after all these months. Um, and this drawing that I did was the first one for um, Inktober um, last year, 2020, uh, 2021 now. Uh, so sorry for the delay. Um, but in any case, um, so I've been working on this thing where it's um, based off of my childhood comics for Inktober. Um, and I've been doing it for um, two years now. So I would just do a panel a day during Inktober um, and try to do a, a story, really, just uh, how I used to do it. No script, no nothing, just... I'm going in there and having fun, and um, I've gotten like, I think 20, no, not even 20 pages, like, uh, tw let's say 18, 18 or something like that so far, I think, including this year, and uh, it's been great, um, but I had to kind of figure out, uh, as I'm doing these pages, what page is next to the other, and I know that's like so opposite of like planning ahead. Um, so I think there's a point in the book where I actually do reach a, um, a segment that it has to be a splash page. So obviously I have to lock down where does page one start and where does uh, page two land. And what I mean is, um, here, let me see if I can show you. So it, it becomes very important when you open a comic, right? Uh, these are just the sketches for these characters. But when you open a comic, where... Where does the first page start? Does it start on the inside, which is not usually how it is, or is it like on the very front after that you open the cover, right? So we, just this year, I kind of was able to lock down where it would start. And I decided that it would start like this, um, which would mean if it was the cover, I would need another page in front right so that the the sequencing can work correctly uh, i guess i'll go through these pages now so you can see but um it's basically like a giant robot comes out the water these guys call it in call our heroes and these are like my my old childhood heroes so it's gunman vazer um captain t and V2, which I think was my uh, subconscious reference to the V2 rocket, because he's got like a rocket pack. And this was, <laughs> this was, this was actually um, brought up to me by one of my coworkers, because uh, I could not remember for the life of me why I named him V2, but I think it's because of the rocket. Anyway, so now that I got the layout, I'll, I'll show you guys more of this uh, later on, but for now, it's the drawing part. So now that I got that layout, right? Like now, it used to be this was on the very front. But now that I have this layout figured out, I need a page that goes in the beginning. Don't mind these. These are just bills. <laughs> that begins when you open the cover. So I don't have a cover yet. So when you open the cover, this is the first page that you will see. It's a title page. So it's um, kind of uh, homage to the old school Marvel Comics um, top left corner of the cover where you see all the characters and stuff. I always like that. And um, I, I like finding out that it was f actually for a reason so that when it's in the newsstands, you could see who was in that book. But it just is a cool little device that I've always liked. Um, so in this case, I was drawing my characters as the first on the first day of Inktober. So Inktober is you're supposed to draw an ink drawing every day. This year, I kind of did not do that. I kind of took it a little easier. Um, and in hindsight, maybe I took it a little too easy. Um, I liked, it's a lot of work, but I liked at the end of the month that I had a huge ton of work to show for it. Um, it just felt like a good accomplishment. And it was a good, it was good, it's good, very good practice. If you guys haven't done it, you should. Um, it will really teach you a lot of things about inking or whatever you decide to do within a month. Anything you decide to do one a day, you're, gonna, you're bound to get a little better um, by the end of that month. So anyway, so it is this drawing. 
that I'll show you guys the time lapse of. And um, I'm thinking I should have, I might have a different format next time where people don't really have to see my face as much because why? <laughs> but um, we'll do where you can see more of the artwork and see more of the comic books that I'm talking about. And maybe I'll just have a camera facing down so you guys can see it. If I can play this, there we go. So this was the first drawing for Inktober and it was a nice start because it kind of came off effortlessly. Well, you know, it's not like the most amazing drawing ever, but <laughs> it came off easy for me to do. Um, and if you guys have done Inktober, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, at the, I do it at the end of the day. So it's kind of like this big push for me to do it. And um, this first drawing was nice to do because it was so fast. Um, the time lapse is so quick. It's like I did it in no time at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know it's time lapse. It's sped up. But like, I think it was really like an hour or an hour and a bit, maybe. Um but it was just easier to plan out, um, to draw the faces and then just go right in there and start inking. Like it kind of, I kind of knew where things would go. Um, and when I finished it, I liked it. And it was, uh, it was, um, it was, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Not perfect, but it was the way that I, um, how efficient it was. There we go. How efficient it was for me to, do one from start to finish uh, an Inktober drawing. And I figure all Inktober, Inktober drawings should, should be like that. It's just um, when you're doing comics, you kind of have to think just a little bit more because I have all these other panels and other pages that I have to make sense of at the end of it all. Um, but this was kind of like a pinup. So it worked out good. And, um, you know, my, my comic that I've collected through all these Inktober years was missing the title page so this ended up pretty good um, it has all my characters it's like a dual purpose it's got all my characters it's a good title page for the book and uh, it helped me warm up again to these guys so like I said all these other previous Inktobers I've been doing I would do a panel a day, let's see. So the first year I did it, I think I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pages, which is actually a lot. Um, so this was one, and then two, right? So that's a panel a day. I'm doing this panel, so that's 30 days. That one. That one, I was surprised I was able to do that in a day. I think I was up pretty late though. These guys. So all this. Gunman. <laughs> there he is again, Vazer. Captain T and V2. And I think this one, I ended on this panel on that first year. So, you know, a whole year passes by. And then the second in October that I was in doing this comic, this was the start. So this was a little daunting. I remember I was like, oh man, I gotta make this awesome looking splash of the, these characters I haven't drawn for a year. Um, but it ended up okay. And then this was on the second year that I was doing this comic. And then I think, and it was, it was fun, like, you know, these are my childhood uh, characters that I made. Um, and then I think I ended it uh, right, oh, here we go, okay. So I ended it right here. Oh wait, no, right here, this panel. So then a year passes by and now this uh, last year, 2020, is when I did all these other panels, which I'll go through. Uh, I'll put them all together so it's uh, a bigger chunk. Um, you know, but I only ended up... So that second year, I ended up, I think, with another seven pages. So 14, right? Seven or eight pages. Seven, I think. 
but this year I only had like four, three, I'm not even sure. So anyway, so this year, or sorry, let's keep saying this year, it's 2021. Last year it was this, it started from here. So panel day, um, actually it was more like a panel every two days, <laughs> every two days. Oh yeah. So see, I only had, man, I only had one, two, three panels or three pages and then some of this. And this is where my splash page is going to be. Um, so that's, that's barely even half, right? Like that's not even half of what I did on those last few year, few years, but you know, that was every day after work, I had to gear up again, figure out what the panel would be, um, take shortcuts. Um, and you know, it was all these things, but I'd be working right after the kids went to bed and then I'd be working at least until 12. There was no way I ever ended it. Um, before that, and then posting it up on social media is a whole headache in itself <laughs> that you can get sucked in if you're not careful, right? Cause you're, then you're checking your feeds, <laughs> which is annoying. Um, but, um, I liked what I came up with and what I had at the end of, um, the previous year, 2020 Inktober. Um, but I wish I had more. So the good part is I wasn't totally burned out afterwards, except because usually after every Inktober I'd be done and I wouldn't be drawing for a while. Um, the interesting part is I haven't been drawing for a while anyway, even though I haven't been burned out. Um, but I think I can get back on this and start drawing, um, easily. Um, because I wasn't pushing myself that crazy this year. Next year, maybe I will go back into it because, um, I'll have forgotten how crazy it was. Anyway, um, these are the sketches I had, um, maybe right before I first started the Inktober with this comic. So this was me trying to figure out what these characters would look like. Um, and I think this is the first time I drew them in this style. Uh, cause it, I was doing a lot of fan art, um, on the first few years of Inktober. Um, so, you know, it, it, it was like Superman, Wonder Woman, um, Sega characters, Nintendo characters, uh, Spider-Man and, you know, it was fun. But um, these characters never were designed with even that way that I was drawing. So <clears throat> those character sheets helped a lot. So I could go back to it, especially since I take a year in between each clump of seven pages. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's it for today. Uh, it's a shorter uh, drawing segment, and I'm not sure... <laughs> you guys got anything out of that. Um, but it's good for me to kind of decompress. And um, I think even looking back, that page was a good way for me to ease in onto all the comics. Uh, it's a good warm up and it was functionally usable. Like it wasn't like just a sketch that I would never use for that comic book. Um, but anyway, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the show. And I'll hope to post more. <laughs> um, please do the usual YouTube stuff, uh, you know, clicking on things and things and things, <laughs> subscribing and stuff. Um, but uh, thank you for joining me and listening to me rant. And I will be back next episode.